So I'm going to be talking about uh, the HTTP gateways, which is a aspect of IPFS that everyone has probably interacted with, right? You go to IPFS.io, uh, and we have a lot of traffic uh, from web browsers, from current, uh, you know, Web 2 uh, interactions that aren't running a full IPFS client but need to interact with IPFS. So this is a bridge um, that currently is operated by a set of centralized operators, and depending on which URL you go to, you'll get a specific operator. Um, so one of, one of the efforts that uh, a, a relatively large group of people across a number of teams that PL has been working on over the last months has been to think about how do we decentralize and improve what that bridging looks like, and how do we make the gateways better? What should the next iteration of these gateways look like? Um, to that end, I'm gonna start by giving you a little bit more view into what the gateways look like today so that we can see how do we do better. So when you, when you go to the gateways, you're making requests largely of the form slash IPFS slash SID, maybe slash path after that to get uh, a file or, or a collection of files. And those requests first go to a load balancer. Um, and then the load balancer sends it to an IPFS node that looks like the IPFS node that you might run on your own computer. It's tuned differently, it has different configuration, but it is an IPFS node that then goes and gets the content when it doesn't already have it from the broad public IPFS network, okay? And so when we think about how are we going to do better here, what, what, what are our opportunities? Well, one thing that is, well, where are these? Can we make it faster? That's a natural thing that we might say is, is you know, are, are there limitations in this current setup? And, and when we look at IPFS.io or, or dweb.link specifically, there are seven locations uh, around the world where those are. So if I was to access IPFS.io today, I would be going up to the Amsterdam location. Um, you can see that we're down in Brussels. And, and when we look at that topology of where things are, there actually is a interconnect and a data center about six blocks from us. Uh, the, the Belgian uh, commercial data center is there. Our traffic goes through it on the way up to Amsterdam. Uh, and a lot of other CDN-like things that you have, like Cloudflare or Netflix, are terminating in Belgium uh, and have lower latency than going to one of seven, right? We can think about sort of these classes of latency. And so we've got a couple of options. We would need to either have a lot more points of presence to terminate these connections closer to users. Uh, and, and if we want to do that, that's gonna cost money, right? Like there need to be these servers in not just seven places, but in, in hundreds of places. If, if we're going to be able to get that final hop to users uh, faster, we need to figure out how do, we, how do we get this not just in these specific data centers. Um, the good news is Protocol Labs already has one of these CDNs with lots of locations. Uh, last, last fall, uh, Project Saturn launched. Um, Saturn has almost 2,000 nodes currently. Uh, and you can see that it has nodes both in Belgium and in Amsterdam. Uh, or in, in the Netherlands, along with uh, nodes scattered through many countries at this point. Um, and so we've already incentivized people to be running servers in most metro areas. And so there's this question then of can we leverage that to get these final hops uh, to get IPFS data and, and perform this bridge uh, faster um, for users and make a better experience. And so with that, Project RIA uh, launched, it has three sort of concurrent goals overall. Um, we want to be able to retrieve not just from IPFS, but also from Filecoin and have sort of a broader set of retrievals of content address data and think about how we iterate there. We want to validate Saturn as a CDN so that we're uh, you know, eating our own dog food, but also validating that, that this CDN uh, and, and in practice a decentralized CDN uh, is, is an effective way to serve traffic. Uh, and we want to reduce the centralization that has ended up uh, occurring of most traffic going through a PL run uh, entity, right? That, that IPFS.io as a website that people have sort of gotten in their heads is like the place that you could type in and put as a URL. That means you're, you're sort of going to some DNS that Protocol Labs runs. And for many of the requests, you're trusting Protocol Labs to validate the content that you're getting. Um, and so from this, uh, we've, we've ended up, I think, with, with sort of two outcomes that, that are worth socializing to the broad IPFS community. The first is we're going to have a series of iterations of 
shifting the trust model. Um, right now, when the, the bulk of requests that go over the HTTP gateway uh, end up getting sort of a rendered file back, right? You want your, your image, you want your HTML page, and what you get back from that IPFS.io slash IPFS slash Baffy, whatever, is the, is the final thing when you render it in your browser or follow the link today. And when that happens, that final rendering isn't your client revalidating that it's actually gotten the hash that it asked for. That validation is happening currently on the servers. And so we want to encourage more clients to get built and that the default should be that you get back the blocks that you ask for and then locally reconstruct and, and render and build the file. And there's a number of ways to do this. One is with service workers. Another is with sort of somewhat thicker clients uh, or just JavaScript libraries, depending on how you're integrating that. But if the client validates, there's suddenly a lot more flexibility and we can offer both better speed uh, and cheaper uh, access to content address data uh, and more resilient. Um, and so that's going to sort of be uh, an increasing carrot in some sense, is that if, if you're willing to expand your client uh, experience so that you can do validation, you'll be able to get a much better experience. We're also building a lot of stuff to enable this. Um, and so some that I want to call out that we'll be diving into uh, over the coming days. Uh, one is Bifrost Gateway. Um, so on the, on the left diagram, you see the, the first sort of stage of how we're thinking about uh, this change in RIA is that inbound requests from the load balancer are going to go not to a Kubo node, but to a, a new piece of software called Bifrost Gateway. And Bifrost, Gate the Bifrost Gateway is a refactoring of the gateways code that can do the same parsing and interpretation of client requests, but instead of then being Kubo and taking that into a, a bit swap combination with a local block store, it's going to pretend that it has a remote block store and it's going to understand how to make a uh, more semantically meaningful request for the data that it needs to serve those HTTP requests. So it's going to be able to say, in order to serve this render directory, what I actually need is the car file with this set of blocks. And so it's able to describe that in terms of um, a selector that, that describes the depth of how many blocks and in what shape it wants back to some remote backend. And so that's the request that then goes back to Saturn. This gateway is able to do the verification for clients that aren't verifying yet in the same way that the current gateway does. Um, but it starts to define what we're going to need for the trustless HTTP spec for how a gateway that isn't trusted is able to serve content. The second sort of big piece that we'll hear about later today in the data transfer track uh, is a project called Lassie, which then is just the fetching part. And so it gets these requests and is looking at how does it get it from the IPFS and from the Filecoin network. Um, it uses IPNI uh, as a primary way to find where content is around the content addressed universe, um, and then is able to retrieve, construct into cars, and return the, the content that is being asked for. Um, and so it's not, it's not saving stuff. It doesn't have a block store. Um, it doesn't have the interpretation of Merkle DAGs in the full way. Um, so in, in some ways, it's a much lighter, and it, it's able to be embedded as a library within other pieces of software. Um, and so by putting that into Saturn, we're able to then take Saturn responses of cars, do the trust when we need to at the current gateways, but also start to encourage people to talk to Saturn directly because that's how they get the thousands of points of presence instead of just the single one. So that's RIA. You'll hear a lot about it over the next uh, couple days. There's a lot of people in this room who have been working on it in various ways uh, over the last months, um, and I'm excited to talk more about it.